All right, so today we're gonna take this 256 gigabyte Mac mini and we're gonna upgrade the internal storage to two terabytes with a custom SSD kit from m4-ssd.com. So I ordered the kit uh, early in January and the kit just arrived today. Today's January 10th, 2025. Kit says arrived in the mail, showed up promptly see we've got the drive here for the Mac. Very, very small. This kit also came with all of the necessary tools uh, that you'll need to install. So it looks like we've got a set of uh, our T4, T3, and T2 drivers, a suction cup here for uh, removing the back case, and then also a little pry bar. Well, let's get down into it. Almost open. All right. Let's dig in. We've got three torques here three here and two on the end and two right here. Get these two T4s. We'll switch bits and we'll do these two T3s right over here.
should allow us here to move our fan out of the way. Let's see, We've got our OEM SSD right here. Not a lot of space to work in there. So now we've got our OEM SSD out and we can squeeze in our new two terabyte drive. We'll reinstall that the hard drive is in. Drop this down, put our fan back on, line everything up, put our two really small T3s back in. The really cool part about this upgrade was I only paid $300 for this two terabyte drive, which obviously is more money than they cost on Amazon or any other sort of online website. But to do a two terabyte storage upgrade at the Apple store, when purchasing this Mac mini at checkout, it's gonna cost you 800 USD. And I don't know about you, but $800 for two terabytes of storage uh, upgrade when the base price of the Mac Mini is only $599. Oh, it doesn't sound like a good deal to me. So I took a gamble and uh, we'll see how it works out because after we get all of this reinstalled, then the next thing that we do is uh, we're gonna put this Mac Mini in DFU mode and uh, we'll restore it and it should work just like new. All right, we're all back together. Now let's uh, see what happens when we uh, try to restore it. On the back of the Mac Mini, we need to connect our HDMI cable so we can get some video out during the first boot process. Next, we'll connect our network cable. Then we'll connect our mouse and keyboard. To enter into DFU mode, we'll need to hold the power button on the bottom of the Mac Mini while we plug in the power cord. We'll know we're in DFU mode when the light on the front of the Mini starts to flash orange. To restore this Mac from DFU mode from another Mac, we'll need to connect a Thunderbolt cable on the back of the Mac Mini in the middle port. It must be in the middle port, and if it's not in the middle port, the Mac is gonna fail to restore. Let's get this connected and start our restore. Holding the power button down, let's plug this thing in. All right, it's flashing orange. That's great news. Now let's connect our Thunderbolt cable to our other Mac to complete the restore process. Now that we've got the two Macs connected, you'll see on our MacBook, our Mac mini appears here in the finder. Let's click restore this Mac to complete the process. It's gonna download a 16 gigabyte file to complete the restore. I had already downloaded the file, but I think I missed to shift click or control click the restore Mac button to get the dialog to select my restore file. This restore process is gonna take several minutes, so we'll go ahead and fast forward through it.
Our DFU restore took about 15 minutes, including the download, not terribly long, and now it looks like our Mac Mini is rebooting. Hey, look at that, it worked. Great news. I'm gonna complete the rest of the setup here by restoring this Mini from one of my Time Machine backups. And sorry for the poor capture quality. I don't know what the heck happened with uh, the capture card here for this Time Machine restore. All right, looks like my restore is complete and I'm back into Mac OS. Let's go ahead and go up here to the settings menu and check out uh, our device manager here and our Mac mini overview here. As you can see, the Mini was successfully updated with this two terabyte drive, giving us SSD speeds that we could expect from the factory. I'm only a day in with the upgrade and things are working just fine. If something changes or goes wrong, I'll update the video, but so far, so good with this fairly easy install.